Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Britt here and I want to stop you now because if you have not seen the very first portion of Document With Me in My Traveler's Notebook, please click in the upper right corner so that you don't miss out. Now today we will be talking about how I create clusters in my Traveler's Notebook. So that brings us to the next page and it is a blank slate. So I'm going to show you exactly, kind of walk you through how I do this. And I think this is the fun part because when I do it, I am not thinking too hard to be honest. It's kind of like, hmm, that looks good, let's put that there. And if I don't like it, then I can just cover it up with another piece of washi or another uh, piece of paper and so that's what I'm doing. So I do have some pictures printed and they're in my, they're actually in the notebook, um, the cover. So I want to show you how I kind of form my clusters. So to start off, I will let you know that I have a couple pouches of these like ephemera packs I bought over a year and a half ago and I am still trying to use it because I bought so much I was going crazy and all you scrapbooking people and creative people know exactly what I mean but I have so many so this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about that I want to use up now I always like to start off with dark colors first and then to layer with lighter um, lighter see-through things. So, for instance, if I have vellum, if I have small pieces of vellum, I don't want to use those first. I usually want to st stick small pieces last or like in the middle versus something large I might want to stick down or I might want to only use a piece or a portion of it and then cut it off and then save it for the next time or and so let's see I kind of want to change up the color this one I did like a pink and green theme I did the red and orangey yellow more browns and different shades of browns so let me see I want to change it up I don't want to add too much color to one page so I'm going to open up my ephemera pieces here and I don't always lay it out I just kind of see what I have but in this case I will lay it out so this set is like a pack from that you can get um, from your local craft store and I actually got these From, I think it was Michael's. These are a pack from Tim Holtz line and it's just old papers and book pages and just a lot of words which I think is a really neat element to add. So, if I go through, I really like those. So I don't necessarily pick everything out all at once, I kind of just leave the pile off to the side and just try to figure out what works together. So I have a drawer here full of washi tape and I actually have a whole bunch of washi tape in front of me and off to the side of me and then my camera's like right here kind of um, keeping the drawer closed so you might see some bumping in the video and I apologize for that. One thing to 
make note of is that I don't always try to make all the ephemera pieces match. So one piece may be of music notes and what I'm writing about is probably has nothing to do with music. And then I have another layered piece here that I'll add and it's about, it's a notebook or a, it's a book. And I might just add that to it. So the pieces don't necessarily have to match and for me, I'm okay with that. Now when I rip a piece of paper, I like to rip like pieces of the paper and to be able to use it as different clusters around the page. And I think that is the easiest way to make sure that your page colors or the colors on your page are matching in all the different clusters you have. So here I've already torn these pieces of paper together and I'm going to keep them so that I can actually put some of these in other places on the same page. Okay, so I have to add a little bit of a voiceover just because sometimes when I work I don't talk or I can't talk because I'm trying to kind of focus on what I'm doing and I forget to talk. But I wanted to be able to make this video um, a complete walkthrough so you could see the process and I'm not really fast forwarding it, fast forwarding it or um, speeding it up. So here you see I was using some Tim Holtz washi and I am taking some of those ripped pieces of paper and trying to figure out the best way to place them on the page. I believe this is part of a ephemera pack, I cannot remember the name, and I'm cutting it into pieces just to use a portion of the paper. So this is actually a cardstock, it's actually a pretty sturdy piece of paper, and I try to avoid using too much thick paper because I don't want my traveler's notebook to be um, too chunky too fast. But I do decide to use it. And you can see that it has a light shade of pink, which I also have on the bottom left corner of the page, and I'm just trying to bring that to the right side of the page. Now the washi tapes I use, I do save them off to the side because when I place it in one location. I also want to try to use similar washi in another location on the page. So I'll just set it off here to the side. And then I will look through my page. I got like that. So I thought I would add a little bit of red to my page, just a little bit of a bright piece of color to make everything pop. Now how I want to use this is probably in strips. Now I like to use strips of paper because it's easier for me to add that pop of color without taking up too much space on my page. Now remember I do want to journal in this notebook so I don't want too much space taken up by these clusters but I still want to see the elements that I use.
and you can see that the edges of these strips are not at all even, which is okay because it kind of goes with my theme. Not everything is perfect, but when it's laid out together, it looks pretty good. I also have these, which I got from Hobby Lobby, and these are actually stickers. I always think it's great to add different shapes to your clusters just because it just makes it more interesting in my opinion. And here I am trying to arrange and layer and put things on top of each other and see how they look before I actually glue them down. And then sometimes I actually put, pull up some of the elements I've already glued down to under layer. Is that a word? So next I have this brown paper bag that I've been tearing up and I got it from like packaging material. So you wouldn't believe how a brown piece of paper like this one is makes your spread. It just makes it look more organic and it actually adds a lot of texture to your white pages especially and I just love using the brown paper bag. So make sure that if you have packaging or if you have anything coming in the mail, any happy mail, um, Amazon, you guys know your Amazon always usually has some brown paper bag and just save it because you can always use it for scrapbooking and um, journaling and things like that. Okay, so I pretty much placed everything down. You see I did lift up a couple pieces that I have already previously glued and laid the brown bag behind it. So I was looking for some washi and I like these gold elements here so I'm thinking about using this black stripe washi and then this word washi. Sometimes I like to take out my washi and then tear it in half. It doesn't matter if it's even or not. So I have my tracing paper and one thing I really like to do So I like to take the tracing paper and completely cover majority of one of the elements just so that it's not as bright. Now when I'm collaging, I like to keep some elements on the page very detailed, whereas other elements, just very simple.
Okay, so I feel as though I'm done decorating. Now it's about placement of the photos. That will be in my next video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I hope it was informative and please make sure you check out that next video to see how I put my pictures in place and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!